And we start this hour with the verdict in the coerced suicide trial in Tennessee. Before the break on Ted Rowland's show, you got to see each side presenting their closing arguments in the case against defendant Hayden Berkebile. The 29-year-old was accused of criminally negligent homicide as well as following a false report. All in the death of 19-year-old Grace Ann Sparks after she pointed a gun at her head and shot herself. Prosecutors allege that the two were engaging in a sadistic relationship of BDSM and that Sparks killed herself under the direction of Berkebal, who spent years controlling and manipulating her ever since she was a young teenager. Berkebal's defense team countered the state's arguments, claiming that the two mutually engaged in suicide role play. But the Berkebal did not want Sparks to die. So who will the jury believe? Will Berkebal be held responsible for Sparks' death, even though she was the one who actually pulled the trigger? Take a listen now to the jury's decision. Okay, we see this is the state way to call today. State way to defense way to call. Defense way to Welcome back to the votes. Uh, juror number nine, I understand you're our four person. Is that correct, sir? Yes, sir. Has the jury reached in and unanimous verdict? Yes, sir, we have. Can you please hand the votes to Mr. Thompson? I'm just to review that. Just to make sure that the verdict form has, in fact, been completed and signed. Once that is done, I will return to you, number nine, to publish to the court. All right, that direct reflect the court does find that the verdict form is complete. I will return that to you, juror number nine. And, sir, can you please stand? And Mr. Uh, Berkhoff, can you please stand to make the jury as well? And uh, juror number nine, if you please help us the jury's findings, I want you to start with the sentence, we the jury, and then announce your findings. <clears throat> we the jury find the defendant, Hayden Jennings Berkhoff, guilty of criminal negligent homicide. Thank you, sir. You can have a seat. Uh, you can have a seat as well for Mr. Berkebile. If you return the uh, instructions and verdicts from your officer. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, if that is your individual verdict, as signified by juror number nine, please indicate by raising your right hand. All right, let's break the left. Of course, he's all both hands. Is he decided to for the poll? Not from the state Right? Not from the defense, Your Honor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that will complete your service, not only in this case, but for your two-week jury uh, period. I do appreciate very much the uh, service that you provide in our community. I know you're all ready to get out of here, but I would like to have an opportunity to thank each of you by handing you a certificate of appreciation. So if you can wait a few more minutes, I have some work I need to address with the attorneys. Uh, and then I will come and discharge you from the jury room. At this time, you are uh, discharged from the thanks of the court. Please don't call your code. Hey, Jennings Burke Files, I come to 117131 at being tried by a jury here to now go to the criminal night and homicide. The court has entered that finding. I exercise my role as a jury to ensure and find as a way to get us to support that finding. Count number two was dismissed by the uh, court, and that's the state prepared. A judge of dismissal for count number two. You can have a seat now, sir. So we need to schedule this case uh, for sentencing. That needs to be done within 45 days. Today is the 19th of May. We will refer him for a precinct investigation report. I would suggest the 30th day of June. Your Honor, that is a good day for me. It is good for this day. I can make that work. Is that good for the panel? All right. So we'll schedule for June 30th. Uh, this is a Class D felony. It is not mandatory that Mr. Berkeval's uh, $100,000 bond be revoked. However, due to the proof in this case and the fact that Mr. Berkeval is a resident of another state, the court does revoke his bond at this time and will take him into custody pending that sentencing hearing. Should the court order that Mr. Berkeval serve more time, the court would entertain a bond or an appellate motion, or an appellate bond motion uh, at the sentencing hearing. But pending that sentencing hearing, he will remain in custody. So, also, please take Mr. Berkeval into custody. The court stands adjourned until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Mr. Chairman, for the record, we will lodge your objections to that for the record. Yes, sir. Are we still on the record? Yes, yes, we are still. Your Honor, for the record, we would uh, lodge our objection to that. This is a class C felony, one step above the class A misdemeanor. He would be considered a favorable candidate for the probation or most of extension, Your Honor. Even if this were a misdemeanor after conviction and sentence, he'd have a right to tell a bond. This just being one step above that, it seems unnecessary to revoke his bond, especially since he has come down here and appeared, and there's no reason to believe that he would not appear. He picked up no known charges. There's no reason to believe he remains a trust. 
I did believe that there's a, a greater way, the uh, possibility that uh, he would not appear um, since he's now been convicted, uh, and due to the, the facts that have been introduced to the court as well, too, the court believes that uh, a, a sentence of confinement for some period of time will be important. So I don't think it's going to be dead how many serving. So I do understand your objection, Mr. Lowe, uh, but I am in favor of the price of Thank you. Thank you. Hayden Berkebel found guilty of homicide in Grace Ann Sparks' suicide. This is a landmark case for Tennessee. Never happened before. The first time somebody has been charged in such a way. And he was in another state at the time, not even physically present. We want to get some reaction now to this verdict and bring in Court TV legal correspondent Joy Lim Nakrin. She is standing by in Knoxville uh, with some information for us. Joy, good to see you. I know you had a chance to sit down with the victim's mother. Um, what was her reaction to the jury's decision? Well, Julie, no surprise that the mother of Grace Ann Sparks, Candy Sparks, considers this justice being served a huge victory. And in fact, she considers it just a first step in what is to come. She is joining prosecutors in calling for new legislation, specifically addressing this kind of growing body of law uh, concerning coerced suicide. As we know, this particular case was prosecuted under uh, criminally negligent homicide, kind of a, a broader body of law. And typically, as you mentioned, Julie, it applies to actions, not specifically words. And so Candace Sparks wants to make sure that there are no loopholes, that even in the letter of the law itself via legislation that coerced suicide using words that could ultimately drive this result, that that would be made illegal here in the state of Tennessee. I got a chance to sit down with her inside of her home uh, earlier this week. Let's go ahead and listen to what she said about this verdict. Grace is also a word that means gift from God. A blessed name for a gift of a girl. She had a smile, just a smile that would light up the room and her blue eyes, some of the bluest eyes I've ever seen and they just twinkled when she laughed or was up to mischief or something. I mean, she was my kid that I always thought she's gonna go out and change the world. The still grieving mother of Grace Ann Sparks finding triumph through tragedy. So I'm so grateful that the jury was able to see that he essentially, for all intents and purposes, killed Grace Ann. I'm glad they were able to see that. And my work is to make sure that Grace Ann's life, her death, was not in vain. Candy Sparks commended the jury for convicting Hayden Berkevile of criminally negligent homicide for driving her daughter to suicide. Feel like it's justice? Yes. Yes, I do. He was found guilty. And the word homicide is in his guilty verdict. His guilty verdict, it meant that he has responsibility for what he did. And that is justice, in my opinion. Critics say it's a slippery slope, chipping away at the rights to free speech while absolving personal responsibility. Well, first of all, you can't walk into a crowded building and yell fire. You can't make a bomb threat. You can't threaten to kill the president. You know, those things will get you in trouble, serious trouble. And I liken it to that. I liken this coerced, this encouraged suicide to that. If you use your words for evil, you need to be stopped. She's joining prosecutors in calling for legislation specifically banning coercing suicide. So that's part of what I feel like I need to do. We can make new law, or not we, but the district attorney's office in Knoxville. They want to write new law. And this guilty verdict is a first step in that. She's sharing her story, hoping to spare others her pain. Watch your loves, watch your children, watch your babies. Be careful what you give them access to. But at the same time, this is not allowed. This should not be 
our norm. Little girls, little boys should not have to worry that there is some adult out there that with no consequences, with no accountability, can exploit them. We have to keep this from happening, not just against children, but, you know, even adults. When you take your words and you take your influence and you manipulate people and you take advantage of their weaknesses and their vulnerabilities, just so that you can fulfill a fantasy of watching somebody die. That's wrong. Candy knows just how much words can mean. In this house, we are always honest. We count our blessings. We are supportive. We are kind and tender-hearted. We keep our promises. We comfort one another. And above all, we love one another. And those are words she lives by. I know that she's in a place where she's not suffering anymore. I also know that I will see her again someday. And the Lord, he comforts me. I go to church. I have a lot of great friends at church that are very supportive and that helps me find peace. But. Mostly it's a lot of prayer, and it's remembering that I will see her again someday. You know, families last a lifetime, and they last into the next life, too. They're forever. So my girl's just waiting for me. She's waiting for me somewhere else right now. And uh, Julie, you know, it's just hard not to be moved by the strength that Candy Sparks has shown through all of this. It's clearly still so painful for her to talk about her daughter's death and, and those last few months of her life and, and to talk about the fact that her daughter was suffering and that that really she didn't, she didn't know it. And, um, you know, she just said, Julie, that she just wanted to share this story, D despite how painful it is for her, she wanted to share her story with the world so that at least there's something positive that comes out of it. If she can help save other lives by making parents and, and families aware of, of what can happen, if she can change laws that actually stop those kind of words, which ultimately, she says, killed, killed her daughter. Yes, Joy, oh, you're absolutely right. I, I hope Candace Sparks knows how admirable what she has done is by speaking out, sharing something so painful, and then saying, I want to look forward and make sure this doesn't happen to anyone else's child. Uh, the strength it must take to do that, the strength, as you know, Joy, for her to sit down, open up to you, do it in front of our cameras, knowing that the, the world can see it and scrutinize every word. Uh, what, what a lovely woman. Our, our hearts go out to her. Uh, Joy Limnacron, thank you so much for all your reporting on this very, very sad case. And we do have an update as well on the sentencing because as you know, this trial happened in real time while we were in the Johnny Depp case. So you heard his honor talking about that May date in the, the clip where we played the verdict. And so in real time, that sentencing date for Hayden Berkabal was just rescheduled, we learned on Tuesday. It's now been moved to July 15th. And of course, whenever that sentencing date comes, we're gonna be there with our cameras and uh, bring you the information. He has been convicted of that crime of criminally negligent homicide. And we do have also a comment from the district attorney's office. They issued a written statement uh, with the verdict announcement in this case. Uh, this is the Knox County DA's office in Tennessee, of course, saying thanks to the hard work of the investigators and prosecutors in this case, this victim's family was able to receive closure knowing the defendant was held accountable. Signed, D.A. Sharmi Allen. Whoa, uh, what a case. They all in that office should be so proud of themselves, how they used the law, and they were able to 
in a very creative way apply it to these horrific facts to get justice for Grace Sparks' family. Let me bring in my guests. I have two great guests on the program to help me unpack this in the studio with me. Magistrate Court Judge, former prosecuting attorney and also criminal defense attorney, Judge Kimberly Bando, and joining us remotely in San Antonio, Texas, forensic psychologist, Dr. John Delatore. Real pleasure to have you both here. Thank you so much. And Judge, I'd like to begin with you, if I may, please, as we were watching Candace Sparks talking with Joy in that piece and I was watching you too as I was watching it. You were nodding along when she was talking about wanting to change the law and how you know we as people can make those strides to do that. Um, share with me your thoughts on that, how realistic a goal you think that might be. I think she actually could get it accomplished and I applaud her for making that effort and, and hopefully they'll even call it like Joy's Law after her daughter to like remind people that words matter. What you say can make a difference in life or death and you have to be responsible for that. Absolutely, Judge, absolutely. And um, Dr. John, you know, tell me, when we think about the mental health aspect that is so central to this case, um, it is oh so sad, and we know that both the victim and the defendant seem to be suffering uh, with some mental health difficulties. What are some of the things we can take away as, as folks looking at this, watching this, empathizing with the Sparks family over what happened? Any advice you have for anyone out there watching this thinking, I want to I want to go forward knowing a little better um, tomorrow. What would you tell them, please? I mean, there's a, there's a lot. The number one thing, especially for family members, is to always have open communication, right? If you're the parent, you must always act like a parent. Trying to fall into the, to the side of being a friend is not gonna help you. But family movie nights, family dinners, make sure that you have a relationship with your child where you, your child's gonna come to you with whatever it is that's going on. But when it comes to those of us that need help, absolutely reach out for help because you never know who might try to exploit us. Yeah, isn't that the truth? Uh, Dr. John Delatore, Judge Kimberly Bando, you're both going to be with me uh, throughout the next two hours. Uh, we have a lot happening today here on Court TV. After this break, we're going to talk about a lawsuit filed by Gabby Petito's parents against Brian Laundrie's parents. They're all going to be in court today in just about 30 minutes from now. We're going to get you a live report from the courthouse next.